Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to analyze non-recursive models in SIM, Structural Equation Modeling Software, specifically using AMOS. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, non-recursive models and what that means exactly. Uh, so if you have a non-recursive model, it means you have a reciprocal relationship between two constructs. So A leads to B and B leads to A in relationships. So in essence, you have a feedback loop between those two. Uh, so one is influencing, um, uh, these two constructs are influencing each other. Well, there's some challenges when you're talking about non-recursive models that you don't really have with recursive, which means that there's no feedback loops in there. Um, and today we're going to go through an example to kind of give you a better understanding of um, how non-recursive models work, what are the things you need to watch out for, and really to even understand the stability of those parameter estimates when you, when you have a feedback uh, loop. So let's look at a, an example where we've got a feedback loop. So this model uh, right here <coughs> is going to have a single feedback, feedback loop between what's called the construct called trust and confidence. So this whole model was based out of a uh, restaurant setting. Uh, it started with adaptive behavior, which is did the server adapt their behavior to during the experience? Did that lead to customer delight? Were you delighted from the experience? Were you, uh, did you have gratitude about that, that they adapted it? And did this ultimately do more confidence in the a service provider and did you also trust the uh, service provider more and you can see right here that confidence has a relationship to trust but trust also has a relationship to confidence uh, so the thought process was the more I trust that retailer the more confidence I'm going to have in them and on the flip side the more confidence I have in that retailer the more I'm going to trust them too so there's a feedback loop that was there the other thing that you have to watch out for when you have a non-recursive model like this is uh, you can see that there is a covariance here between uh, both uh, of the um, constructs in the feedback loop. Typically, we do not add a covariance on a dependent variable in its error terms. But in this uh, particular example right here, um, the error is going to be uh, correlated between those two because there is a feedback loop. So the error that's going to be explained in trust is probably going to be some of that same error that's in confidence because of the loop that's taking place. So to account for that, you actually have to add a covariance between the error terms of your dependent variables in, in this particular model where there's a feedback loop. So um, just be mindful of that too. So I've set this up as a uh, a full structural model. You can see I've got the unobservables out here and they've got the observables too with the uh, direct relationships uh, to the dependent variables where there's a feedback loop. Now we need to talk a little bit about um, what's called instrumental variables. One of the problems with non-recursive models is, is they're under-identified pretty easily. And the way to kind of avoid the under-identification is that um, you have to include what's called instrumental variables. So to explain really uh, confidence, you need to have uh, constructs that explain that kind of through trust, if you will, through the feedback. So customer delight uh, in this particular model is an instrumental variable. It's instrumental in explaining confidence. So, but it's only going directly to trust. Like that's kind of the quirkiness of it a little bit. So I have to have dedicated constructs that only go to trust to really explain confidence. Uh, on the flip side, the instrumental variable for trust is gratitude. So gratitude has that direct uh, relationship to confidence. It only has that relationship to confidence. And, and in essence, it helps explain trust. So that is one of the things that you really need to kind of watch out for when you're talking about uh, non-recursive models is you have to include enough instrumental variables to explain the parts of the loop. Uh, so you're not just, you know, customer delight explains trust, the end. Well, really, customer delight for the most part is instrumental in explaining confidence in the loop and gratitude is instrumental in explaining 
um, uh, trust. But you have to have, again, dedicated relationships only to one side of those relationships. I can't have gratitude having a relationship both to confidence and trust because then I don't have an instrumental variable that is explaining trust anymore uh, if I did that. So you need to have enough instrumental variables too that will explain the loop. Sometimes you'll see a lot of problems where one half of the loop will be significant but the other half will not be. Uh, and that's a function of there's not enough instrumental variables that's really explaining the, the one side of the, the feedback loop. Uh, if there's just not enough there. Um, but in this particular uh, model, I've only got one instrumental variable for confidence and one instrumental variable for trust uh, that's out there. So let's run this model and kind of see what we, what we get. And then also talk about some of the issues like stability uh, with this model. So if we go into um, the model here, it's going to give us uh, kind of our traditional kind of uh, results. And if we go into estimates here, we're going to see that uh, adaptive behavior uh, had a relationship to customer delight and had it to gratitude. The CR stands for critical ratio, which is basically T values, and they're over two. Uh, gratitude, our instrumental variable, one of them, uh, had a relationship to confidence and uh, customer delight had a relationship uh, to, uh, to trust, which was our other instrumental variable. So at this point, our IV to our mediating uh, constructs, if you will, uh, is significant and our instrumental variables have a relationship to our feedback loop constructs. And if we look all the way down here at the bottom, we can see that trust uh, has a relationship to confidence. That relationship is really strong. And confidence has a significant relationship to trust. So the, lead the feedback loop actually closed significantly. But you can see one side is way stronger than the other. Uh, and that's pretty typical where one side is going to you know, be really uh, very pronounced and the other side is going to have a, you know, a harder time kind of closing that loop back out. But in this particular uh, model, we have a feedback loop that actually closes that trust leads to confidence and confidence leads to trust. The other thing we need to uh, watch out for is model fit. So with model fit, uh, with non-recursive models, you're going to have a real hard time finding model fit uh, in a path model with a non-recursive uh, feedback loop. So path model meaning that I've summated the uh, scores up into a single a single construct there. Uh, it's very difficult to find model fit with path models and non-recursive models because of the unexplained variance and because of the loop that's taking place there. You're much more likely to find model fit in a full structural model which is the one we ran here and you can see I don't really have kind of model fit issues uh, that are out there. Root mean squares uh, and acceptable and chi square about degrees of freedom is in an acceptable range too. I run this exact same model as a path model with that feedback loop, uh, I'm probably not getting model fit at all. After assessing uh, kind of model fit, the other thing that you need to uh, watch out for is, the, is, is your parameter estimate stable? Um, because you can have um, what they call instability with a feedback loop, which means that the there there's uh, the analysis ran, but it doesn't say that they're, uh, they're stable in predicting those parameter estimates. And Amos, uh, when it sees that you've got a feedback loop included, will automatically run that kind of stability index. So one of the links over here, which is called notes for group uh, slash model, is where you can find the stability index. And you can see where it says right here, Amos ran a stability index for the following variables, which was trust and confidence. So it says, hey, I see a relationship between trust to confidence and confidence to trust. It's got a feedback loop. So from the stability index perspective, if it falls within negative one to positive one, it's considered to be stable which means that you know, you've got uh, an estimate that you can present. If it falls outside of negative one or positive one, it's considered unstable, which means that really for the most part, um, a as a whole, your model is considered unstable and the results um, 
or fallible. Usually that's because you don't have enough, uh, a big enough sample to kind of present uh, the stability that's there, or you've got way too much uh, unexplained variance that's in there too, especially with the feedback loop that's creating these kind of issues. So the uh, the thing that you really have kind of watch out for too with these feedback loops and stability indexes is can I have uh, multiple feedback loops in one model? Yes, you can. Uh, extremely difficult because now you have to have multiple instrumental variables uh, for each one of the feedback loops. And if one of the feedback loops is considered unstable, the whole model is considered unstable. Even if the other feedback loop was considered stable and even was significant and closed, if one of the feedback loops, if you're doing multiple ones in there, uh, says it's unstable, the whole model is considered unstable at that point. I would encourage you probably to not try to do multiple feedback loops in one model. It's really difficult enough to do one, but multiple ones just makes it really um, a problematic. Uh, so if you're looking for more information about non-recursive models, I encourage you to check out my book, Applied Structural Equation Modeling. Uh, the book is really kind of set up um, for those that don't know anything about structural equation modeling to those as well that know a lot about it but want to get into more kind of complex topics and more kind of a step-by-step -step kind of process. Um, and as always, if you saw kind of value in the, uh, the videos, I'd ask that you like and subscribe. It kind of helps my channel. Uh, and I hope y'all have a great week. Good people.